So we have got 15 tips, 15 ways that you can improve your iPhone security. You don't have to enable every single one, but if you do a whole bunch of these, you're gonna be in a much better position around your iPhone security. Before we do get into that, please do what you do with across the socials by subscribing, clicking on the button and on the bell so that you don't miss out on any of my video releases. Number one is authentication. Looking at the touch ID, looking at the face ID, looking at stronger passwords. So what you need to do is you need to go into the settings on your iPhone and then navigate down to where it says touch ID and passcode or face ID and passcode. Of course, it depends on whether you have a face ID or a touch ID on your iPhone. In my case, I've got face ID. In your case, you may have touch ID. Enter in your passcode to unlock. So there's a few different options available for face ID. So you wanna enable those as you need to. The same deal with your touch ID. You can reset it as well. Scrolling down to where it says change password down the bottom. I would recommend that you make your password very, very strong. So you enter in your existing password. In my case, I had a five digit. And then down the bottom, it says passcode options. You're gonna select that. And you're now gonna select something that is custom alphanumeric code. You now put in something a lot more difficult, which includes numbers and letters. Then we look at privacy settings. If you've been using your iPhone for enough time, you know that apps, Things that are on your iPhone require your phone to be accessible on the internet, require Bluetooth to be turned on, require Wi-Fi, there's notifications, all of that sort of stuff. So it's important to control those privacy settings. Within the settings area, we want to navigate to privacy. You then see a number of the apps and services that are on your iPhone. You can select each one of those and actually allow or disallow access to those certain things. So if I select contacts, you'll see that those applications are currently accessing my contact. So you turn off or on the specific services that you want to enable access to that particular application on your iPhone. At the very top, you've got location services. Now location services is of course, tracking your location against these applications. So all of these apps that I've got installed, you'll see that next to them, it says while using ask or never. So you can actually go and set that up as you need to. So 13 cabs, which is a cabs app, I can select the location to be never, ask next time while using the app or always. So if you do not want that app to actually know where you are, set that to never, and go back, and then that was now set to never. If you wanna go and turn it all off, on the very top right hand corner, you've got location services and you can turn that to off all together and that will then disable location services across all applications. But just be aware that by doing this, the apps themselves will not be able to track your location. So if you need GPS coordinates or things of that nature, it will not actually know where you are. Then look at using and enforcing two-factor authentication. So rather than having one factor of authentication, just a password, you can set up a second level of authentication, such as an email or an SMS and that will improve the security. Settings, and then tap in your name on the very top hand corner. You're presented with the settings of your Apple ID, and you now select password and security, the second option down, and you want to enable and turn on two-factor authentication. Now what it says right there is that your trusted devices and phone numbers are used to verify your identity when signing in. So when you sign in, it doesn't only ask you for a pin code, but will also ask you for a second form of authentication to secure your iPhone further. USB restriction mode. Essentially, you just wanna be very cautious whenever you're using your iPhone and you're plugging an external USB device into the bottom of it. Now the iPhone could be a USB-C port, it could be a lightning port with an adapter. For example, when your phone is locked, you don't want anybody to be able to just plug something into the bottom of your iPhone. What if you're in public? What if you're in a supermarket and you have, hey look, there's a charging pad available, I wanna plug that into my iPhone. Well, just be cautious about that because you don't know what that is actually connected to. There are ways to get into the iPhone via that USB port into the bottom of your iPhone. So just be very weary, but let's look at how to control that a little bit. Go into settings and then navigate down to touch ID or face ID and passcode. Scroll down to the very bottom and you'll see USB accessories listed and you wanna turn that off. As it says, turn off to prevent USB accessories from connecting when your phone has been locked for more than an hour turn off. Hide or control notification settings. So for example, you get a notification, you get an SMS, you get some sort of alert on your iPhone. Do you want those to be accessible and shown when your iPhone is locked? Let's say you're in a meeting, you've got your iPhone just sitting there on the table and then you get an important message come up 
notification on your phone and then people can see it. Well, maybe you wanna look at controlling that so that it's not visible from the lock screen. Two places that we'll look at this, we can go into settings. You wanna scroll down to where it says notifications there, right in the middle. And this is currently where all the notifications are actually being presented against all the applications. You see that every single app that has notifications is listed in there. And you wanna of course make sure that notifications are only presented when unlocked. So show preview at the very top, you'll see that it says when unlocked. If yours says always, you wanna make sure that that is set to when unlocked. You could also set it to never. Furthermore, the control center, which is accessed from swiping from the top right of your iPhone down, you get access to all of this you can actually disable elements of that so that it's not accessible when it's locked. Settings into the control center and you can turn access within apps off. You can also navigate to each individual app and remove that option. Always be very weary when you're connecting to a public Wi-Fi hotspot. They sound great. You're at your local McDonald's, you're at your Starbucks and they've got free Wi-Fi. Awesome, I can just connect into it. What if you're in a hotel and you're connecting to their Wi-Fi? Essentially, when you're connecting your iPhone to a Wi-Fi network, a public Wi-Fi network, that Wi-Fi router that you're connecting to essentially can get access or at least sees information that could be stored on your iPhone. So the first one is to just to be weary about what Wi-Fi hotspots you connect to only connect to known trusted Wi-Fi networks. But secondly, I recommend using a VPN regardless of what Wi-Fi network you are connecting to publicly. If you're going to a family or friend's house and you're connecting to their Wi-Fi, you at least know them. But if you're in public, use a VPN. This way it ensures that your iPhone, even though it is using a public Wi-Fi, it's then encrypted using a VPN service. Using VPN is actually quite important, especially on public Wi-Fi. So we're gonna select settings. We're gonna scroll down to the general area and then scroll down to where it says VPN. Select that, and now you need to add a VPN connection. Now, of course, you need to go and register for a VPN service, and then you can set that up, and then you can connect to a VPN when you're on Wi-Fi. Now, a great feature that's available in the newer iOS versions is that you can actually review your passwords across all of your services, passwords that are perhaps at risk. This is a great feature where you can actually see all of the websites where you've got your passwords saved, and in some cases where you are duplicating and reusing some of these passwords, we'll get some recommendations around how to improve that. We're gonna open up settings. We're gonna scroll down to passwords at the very top right there. You will have a list of all of the websites that you have visited, as well as the username that you are using to access that particular website. In my case, it is found security recommendations of 180 risks have been found. An option that you could enable is autofill passwords. Selecting that, you can turn autofill passwords to off so that autofill passwords are not enabled. And then selecting security recommendations, you will see a list of every single security risk that has been found. You can then go and change the password on that website and then also have a look at the other recommendations around easily guessed passwords or passwords that are not very secure or very, very complicated. Control your Bluetooth access. If you're not using Bluetooth, turn it off. If you do want it on, control what applications are using Bluetooth. Now it's a generally good practice to not use Bluetooth or Wi-Fi unless you actually need it. So if you don't need Bluetooth, you can swipe from the top right hand down and actually turn the Bluetooth off like so, turn it back on as you need to. But if you wanna control what applications can and can't access Bluetooth, scroll down to privacy, down to Bluetooth, and then turn Bluetooth off against specific applications. Now there's a reason why Apple, there's a reason why all of these companies that make all of the applications on your phone release updates. Now some people may not wanna update their phone, they may not wanna update their apps because it may slow it down. Sometimes that is true, but also Apple and all of these other companies that release updates, they do it for good reasons. They could be releasing updates to fix vulnerabilities, to fix security issues that may have been identified on that phone or on the app. To ensure that updates are installed, you wanna go into the settings area, scroll down to general and software update at the top. It will show you what version of iOS you have running and also if there's a new version available. You can also set automatic updates to on. I would enable both download and install iOS to ensure that your iPhone is updated. For applications, you wanna scroll down from the settings to the app store in the middle there, 
and ensuring automatic downloads are set for app updates. I can't stand spam callers. I can't stand when I get a phone call coming in from a number that I don't know. Well, you can actually control spam callers. Spam is one of those annoying things. You get it via email, you get it on your phone, people pick up and then they get duped into following whatever this person is saying. Well, don't do that in the first place, but you can control that by blocking spam calls. Spam callers can be annoying, so you can disable these by going into the settings area, scrolling down to phone, and then selecting in the center there, silence unknown callers. You can turn that option to on. Now here's one that a lot of people will not like, but don't jailbreak your phone. I know Apple like to do things their way, jailbreaking it while you've got access to all of this other stuff you can install whatever you want but it does expose your phone to things that it shouldn't be exposed to i mean there is a reason why apple has closed the phone you've then got the competitors the androids now they're a lot more susceptible to security vulnerabilities malware all of that sort of stuff because it's a bit more of an open system the iphone is more of a closed so if you're jailbreaking it you're essentially exposing your iPhone to security vulnerabilities that otherwise wouldn't be there. So if you're not using your phone, put your phone into flight mode, into airplane mode, or just shut it down, turn it off. If you're not using your phone, turn it off. A phone that is off, a phone that is in flight mode is gonna be more secure than a phone that is just roaming scanning the Wi-Fi, scanning Bluetooth, scanning your different cell towers around the place. If it's off, it's better. You can swipe down from the very top right-hand corner and select the little image of the airplane on the top left-hand corner. You can also go into settings and enable airplane mode right there. Have a way to be able to track your phone, have a way to be able to open up a computer browser and actually see where your phone is. You can do this via the Find My application on your phone itself. So you can actually track it, you can do remote wipe, you can send a message, you can send an alert, all of that sort of stuff. But essentially it protects your phone in the event that it does get lost or stolen. To track your iPhone, you wanna open up the App Store and you wanna search for Find My. You open up and install that application and then you can actually track where your iPhone is. You then open up the Find My app, tie it to your Apple ID, and then you can track where your iPhone is from any device around the world. So they were my 15 tips. Hopefully one or more or most of these did help you out. Do let me know in the socials whether you liked it by liking, commenting below, as well as that subscribe to my channel. Thanks again, we'll see you next time.